Let's greet one another, hug one another, be seated. Tell everyone it's good to see you. They are new every morning. Always new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou, thou forever. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Lord unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The greatest asset of the believer is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The greatest asset that a believer has is the Holy Spirit. See, if you are in business and you want to start a business, what, will, what do you need? Capital. Is that true? Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate capital. Hallelujah. You know, people say, I need capital. I'm not talking of business now. The capital to do anything in life. You do not know why we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit and we treasure His presence so much. Because He is the only one who is able to open up the Word of God to make the Word of God potent, to make the Word of God living and active. And He's the one who anoints our lives and makes us amazing wonders. The Bible says, no man can receive anything except it be given to him. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth. Hallelujah. I have come to treasure him. If you are a wealthy man, there is only so much money can do. Money cannot heal a sick body. Hallelujah. Money cannot cure barrenness. Money cannot drive demons. If you are educated, education does not scare demons. 
education does not cause a man to live long. Hmm. If you are handsome or beautiful, beauty does not give people food. Otherwise, the beautiful Niger children roaming around will have no reason to be staying on that bridge. Is that true? If you can speak English, that's very good. But there are many intelligent people who have not been able to do much in their lives. But when you have this great spirit of the living God, you can solve the problem of the greatest man in the earth. Ah, this makes you more than a conqueror. See, treasure the spirit of God. This is called koinonia. If you do not value the presence of the Holy Spirit, see, the Holy Spirit will make you a much desired personality. They turned to Jesus and they said, All men seek for you. Why? Because there is this treasure in earthen vessels. The poor will look for you. The sick will look for you. The oppressed will look for you. Those who are confused will look for you. It's impossible to have and honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life and remain a failure. It's impossible. This world is too dark. For his presence not to be recognized in the life of any man. The darkness of the world is a big advantage for the believer. Because the, the smallest spark of light makes you an enviable object. And every week we teach on different topics. But then we always take time to let us understand that our intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit is the greatest asset we have in this place. He's the only one who can make this Bible come alive. You can go to theology school and confuse yourself and not even be blessed again. But when His presence comes upon this word and He opens you, oh no, come on. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit can take you from where you are. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Stop trying to look for only what His presence can give. See, that we are chasing after things that only His presence can give. Do you not see that if you take the Spirit of God and His ministry in your life, to be filled with the Holy Spirit does not mean you are led by the Spirit. You allow your life to come under this governing influence. I'm telling you, He will make you a wonder beyond your imagination. Take me to the place The secret place that holy place that's where I want to be take me to the place the secret place that's where I want to be Holy Spirit Make yourself real to everyone in this place. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. You are the keys of David. You are the one who can anoint the head of a man and turn an ordinary man to become a global wonder. Lord, this is our request. Let my heart be 
the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Just a symbol. Let me be a holy habitation. Where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of Lord, fill this vessel. Fill this vessel. Fill this vessel. Fill this vessel. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, all is name, holy ghost, holy ghost, holy ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Yeah, na 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 ma, sha na na ba, na 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 mo, 
How I desire your presence. I desire your presence. I desire your You are the fountain of life. You are the fountain of life. You can take anyone. To the place of the blessing, to the place of your glory. Oh, oh. Hey, take us, Lord, take us, Lord, to the place of your glory. Take your place. 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 Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Feel my life. Feel my life. Feel my life. My soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul. And my spirit breathe on me. Take my body, my soul. Take my body, my life. Lord, we desire you more than life itself. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. We don't need it. 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 Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. See, listen, let me tell you. There is nothing you are truly looking for that you will ever find. If the Holy Spirit does not lead you there. Are you hearing me? There is nothing. I don't care what it is. There is nothing you are truly looking for. Success. Prosperity. Husband. Wife. Job. 
you will never find it if you disregard the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you in advance, you will never, ever find it until the Holy Spirit leads you there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. You will never find it if it does not lead you there. You can pretend you have found it. You will never find joy. You will never find fulfillment. All of these things people chase after. No. You will never find it disregarding the Holy Spirit. He has become my all. He has become my all. He will turn an ordinary person. See, let me tell you something. Listen. This chase for recognition, this chase for fame, this chase for greatness will keep ending people in utter frustration until the Holy Spirit leads you there. Please take what I'm saying seriously. I'm yet to see one man that truly found life and all it can give with the true joy and satisfaction without the Holy Spirit. It's not true. It's not true. I, I need you to understand that I'm, these things are not just done as a religious jamboree. Some of us have never paid attention to the things of the Spirit. We think if I just come, it's possible to be here right now and your heart is not even with God. You are just here and then you will find out that you will never get that blessing. Are you not tired of trying to find fulfillment outside of him? Why don't you settle down? Come. Be on his side. And see what he will make out of your life. Be magnified. Oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. See, we said this thing years ago. And many people thought we were just talkatives and jokers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This thing, I've been saying this thing for years. But when you don't pay attention to the things of God, your suffering has just begun. Because there are many people after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of a meaningless life of utter frustration. They find out that everything they have put their confidence on has failed one by one. The dangerous thing about that kind of failure is it all does not happen in one day. It will keep happening again. After one cycle finishes, another cycle of failure will start. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Choose that way now. I choose the way for the way for the way of the Lord is the way of I choose the way of the Lord. His presence can guarantee you anything in life. When you honor God's presence, for you, success is an issue of when, not if. It no longer becomes magic. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight a very powerful topic. And I like your heart to be open. Luke 14. Luke 
14. Hallelujah. Say after me, my Christianity must produce an evidence. Say it, my Christianity must produce results. Say it like you believe it, my Christianity must produce results. I forbid you from this resultless Christianity that frustrates you and frustrates those around you. When there is an evidence in your life that God is real and that the truths in his word are real, let me tell you the truth. You will compel men to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you will turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things. We press in need. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, it's gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. can never be a failure in life never 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 have left that cycle forever till Jesus comes I told you last week understanding everybody say understanding when you have he said in all thy getting get understanding come Mike come climb these stairs no, just stay down. Climb up. Climb up. Did you need to think to climb this? Because you know how to do it. Go back and do it again. This is called predictability. Your life can be that accurate and that circumspect that you know that you know that you know that you know that you have come out of certain realms forever. Your life can be that predictable that you can become a success so for you it's a matter of when not if there are some of us success is still at the realm of if because we are still hoping that one day bless you, God will see what I'm doing and then maybe he will just bless me let me tell you in advance you don't need to wait till after 10 years. Let me tell you now. You are wasting your time. It will not work that way. There are keys. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He said, by reason of that keys, whatever you bind in the earth will be bound in the heavens. Whatever you lose. Until you have these keys, you cannot command authority in this realm. Many of us have been listening, but we have not been paying attention. Today is an opportunity again. Why don't you tell yourself, look, I want to settle down. Let me understand this thing once and for all. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight on extraordinary accomplishments. The cost. Extraordinary accomplishments. Colon. The cost. What does it take to be a sign and a wonder? What does it take to be a living wonder? What does it take to function in this earth realm as if you are not a normal human being? What does it take to ride towards the things that force men to bow to? We have been, throughout last month, we are taking a series on success. And I thought we had rounded up until I was praying. And the Lord told me, no, there's one more extraordinary accomplishments the cost tonight I want to open you up to the cost dimension of accomplishments in life the cost dimension hallelujah this word cost and price 
These are two words that many believers hate. We hate that word. The moment you say cost or price, people just resent it and they get angry. But when you say gift or reward, people say, aha, this is what I want. But the moment you say cost, we hate opening up ourselves to the cost implication of life. Unfortunately, let me tell you the truth. Get it straight and get it this night. I don't care who preaches what for you. Don't mislead yourself. You will never, never enter the realm of true greatness and extraordinary accomplishments if you deny the fact that there is a price and there is a cost. So the first thing I want you to know this night is that extraordinary accomplishment is very costly. It's very costly. It's not just costly. It's very costly. Number two, ignorance and failure is also very costly. So, whether you embrace the life that will bring supernatural accomplishments or not, you are going to pay the price in this life. Period. Hallelujah. Outstanding success had a, a huge price tag. It's very costly. Failure also has a price tag. It is also costly. The difference is this. For accomplishment and success, you pay the price before it comes. For failure, you pay the price after it comes. You get that? But you are going to pay the price in any way. So you can choose to pay it now. You don't need to say, I claim success. No, you don't need to claim it. If you pay the price now, that is your act of faith to show that you have chosen. You don't just choose by saying, I choose alone. He said, if you call yourself the sons of Abraham, you would do what Abraham did. Hallelujah. People hate the word cost. They hate the word price. And so many people, especially preachers, have tried to create nice messages to explain away the fact that there is a cost implication to supernatural accomplishment. Let me tell you something. Go and ask any man, whether in the secular world or in the Christendom, who has risen to and made any level of supernatural accomplishment of whatever sort ask them and they will tell you there is a price to pay hallelujah the one time wealthiest man in america was asked a question he said what is the secret of success and he laughed he said secret number one know what the price is number two pay the price period know what it is pay the price and tonight I pray for you that the fear of paying the price for a supernatural life let that fear leave you because let me tell you something you are afraid of what must come so it's better to develop courage and face it once and for all remember we preached a message give me this mountain in every mountain there are giants if you find a mountain that there are no giants run away every mountain there are giants life is full of men who paid several prices defied certain things and today the world is celebrating them and if you must do much for God there is a price to pay don't let anybody fool you there is a price to pay hallelujah and tonight we will look at the cost factor the cost implication hallelujah if we do not want to end up like many people that we have seen or many believers frustrated humiliated then it's important to pay the price right now i will always quote this scripture lamentations 3 27 
He said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Now that you have strength, why don't you make up your mind to flog it out with destiny? So that you can enter the Sabbath and rest once and for all. The Bible says, and on the seventh day, God rested. I've said it again and again. If you have not entered your seventh day and you are resting, let me tell you, life will kick you out of that rest in a painful way. You only rest when you have entered your seventh day. Some from day one, they are already seeking rest. We live in a generation of comfort. We like comfort. Hallelujah. A lot of people like comfort. We love comfort. We hate inconvenience. No, no. Don't keep me standing for 10 minutes. Uh -uh. I can't take it. Ah, the sun is too hot. Go and buy umbrella for me. We, we, we are addicted to comfort. To, a, to a, a degree that it is robbing us of paying the price for a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Someone starts a business. The first profit that comes is buying jeans and shoe and buying one, one rickety car that you keep maintaining it for the next how many years until everything eats up his money. But to pay the price and say, oh, let me just wait. Let me endure. No, I want to prove a point. I want to prove a point. Comfort. Comfort has destroyed a lot of people. Comfort is good, but you see, let me tell you something. When it gets to a point where it stops you from paying the price, then you are you are eating your future in your today. And this is the case with a lot of people. Hallelujah. This is what has birthed this false and fake life that people live. They try to pretend realms of success they have not yet come into. And so they put themselves under unnecessary pressure. Hallelujah. It's very important. Say after me, I will pay the price. Please say it, I will pay the price. Look at me. Don't you think this message is not important this night? Because I am going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment, they think it's not spiritual enough. I thought we just came and we should be praying. Or I thought we should come and do this. Sooner or later, your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you backslide spiritually without knowing. Hallelujah. When you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night, you have the fees of children to pay. Is that true? You have responsibilities. At that point, you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit. It takes keys and opening up yourself to them. May your children never look at you and say, Daddy, what is what is the benefit of all of this Christianity? May people not look at you in the village and say you are, you are an unbeliever. I am a Christian. What is the difference? See, let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is a reward system. Are you following me now? The kingdom of God operates on a reward system. So you are rewarded for compassion lying with kingdom principles I made up my mind years ago that I was going to end some things in my life forever and I knew that to do that comfort would be out of the way and this is my first encouragement for you this night take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort is not bad pack it up and keep it a day will come when you will be comfortable indeed not now the bible says the vision will speak at the end no vision speaks at the beginning it says it in the end it will speak hallelujah 
another deceitful approach to success is waiting for God to do everything have you seen people like that I know God will do it I know my God will do it are you not the king of the heavens you can do anything you want to do you can bless whoever you want to bless you can curse whoever you want to curse let me tell you straight to the point if that is your philosophy then your suffering has not yet begun the bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the lord he said but the earth has he given to the sons of men if you do not take charge of your destiny you may be very surprised hallelujah I'm going to be talking about three aspects three levels of the cost number one we'll quickly look at the spiritual cost the first cost is the spiritual cost you want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments no matter who you are the first price to pay is your spiritual life the spiritual cost hallelujah there are many of you right now if i ask you what are you doing towards your success you say i'm trying to look for money i'm looking for capital may god just bless me let me just get money and see what i will do or somebody's running somewhere and say i'm just trying to look for a job i'm trying to look for this and we pay very little attention if at all for some of us our spiritual lives we wake up in the morning 5 30 stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning hurrying running from morning until night ask them what they are looking for they tell you i want to move forward i want to make progress i want to make meaning out of my life but the bible says except the lord builds the house he said the word there is not except the lord build it for you except the lord becomes the architect of the house he says they labor in vain and except the Lord watches over his city, said the watchman watched in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he giveth to his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scripture quickly. Second Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles 26. If you are there, say Amen. Verse 5. Are you there? Verse 5. It says, This is speaking about the king Uzziah. Listen please. He said, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and he said oh I thought it was projected he said as, and as long as he sought God what happened God made him prosper is that in your Bible as long as he sought God what happened so his prosperity his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion genuine passion for God many of us do not have a passion for god we only love god because we have been told that he is mighty and if you come close to him maybe he will drive demons away from your life and then success will come quickly if you want to be blessed and to do much for god in this kingdom the first requirement is your spiritual life Uzziah he sought God he says as long as he sought God God made him to prosper let's read on and he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God look at his accomplishments look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him and the wall of Ashdod and build cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who dwelt in Gubal and in 
Milnim and the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. Look at all the things that happened in his life because he sought God. Let's read on. And his name spread abroad. This is the fame many people are looking for. And his name, why? He sought God. He sought the health of his spiritual life first. He was not just seeking fame and power. In the Bible, everyone who truly sought God made a mark in this life. Listen to me. The first cost is your spiritual life. Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at this accomplishment. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid. Whatever you build, if you are not careful, but he said he built towers in a desert. Extraordinary accomplishment because he sought God. Hallelujah. And he dig many wells for he had much cattle both in Shephela and in the plains husbandmen also and vine dressers in the mountains and so on and so forth. Read verse 11. He said moreover Uzziah had a host of fighting men. Who is this strange man that was just breaking records smashing records again and again Find the things that had been done in his days. The Bible tells us his secret. He said he sought God. He sought God. Look at this kind of exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits. It doesn't just happen by magic. Let's finish up. We'll read to verse 15. Who went out to war by bands according to the numbers of their reckonings by the hand of Jael, the scribe, Hallelujah. And then let's read verse um, 14. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones. Verse 15. And he made in Jerusalem what? Engines. The first person in the Bible recorded to invent engines. This guy broke through in several circles. The Bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they used engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price oh there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so peradventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in hell to the proportion to which your soul prospereth we have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul our intimacy and our relationship there are many things that can distract us looking for money looking for success wanting connection wanting to go here and there wanting to go abroad germany italy dubai everybody wants to go let me tell you something if you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says Uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are 
Say, I take my spiritual life seriously. The spiritual cost. Under the spiritual cost, the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom. Everybody say revelation. You want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom. We are talking about your spiritual cost now. Revelation and wisdom. Paul prayed to the church, especially in uh, uh, the, the, the church in, 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 in Ephesus. Ephesians 1 from verse 17 down. He said, I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The heart of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Revelation and wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take the truth of God's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you. Anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life, is not advancing the kingdom, is not improving the quality of your life, dump it. It's a waste of time. Wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge. It's the ability to take the truth of God's word and offer solution to life's problems. And the Bible says, Daniel 12 verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens. Daniel 12, it says, And they that be wise shall do what? Shall shine as the brightness. You want to be a star? You want to rise above? Get wisdom. Get revelation. Understand how things work in the spirit. When you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results, I promise you, life will bow to you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So, pay the price. Let your spiritual growth be constructive. It's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages. Go for revelation. This is what we seek to teach. Not revelation of stories, principles, keys, keys, keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you find the key to this door, you can open it. When you find the key to this door, you will open it. When you find the key to that door, you will open it. If you do not have the door, you can pretend the door is open. But sooner or later, life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key. There are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say, no, look, let's take this thing. Can I tell you something? No matter how long, find it. He said the kingdom of God is like a man who is searching for a pearl. When he found it, he sold everything he had to buy that land. When you pay the price to get revelation it will reward you please listen to me finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws health in the kingdom has spiritual laws victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws success in life has spiritual laws favor has spiritual laws they don't just happen a good marriage is governed by spiritual laws hallelujah longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws how many of these laws do you know that is how you can measure the quality of your life i want to ask you a very practical question how many of these laws do you know hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the lord with all your heart he will open you up to revelations first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for them that speak in tongues for them that love him when you love god he will open you up to secrets and brother when you find it you have found it forever. 
when you truly love God and for as long as he sought the Lord God made him to prosper have you been seeking the Lord in your quest for accomplishment have you been paying is God part of your success equation I love the Lord with all my heart the Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 3 it says and Solomon loved the Lord Solomon loved that's what that's, that was the basis of everything that he did and Solomon loved the Lord Do you really love the Lord enough to seek Him with all your heart? To seek to know His ways? And how do you know those who love the Lord? It's very clear. John 14, 21. So don't just say, I love the Lord. We are going to see it now. John 14, 21. Hallelujah. It says, He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. So who is the one that loves God? Please listen. Who is it? Who is the one that loves God? It didn't say the one who claims, I love God. I love God. I love God. No, -uh. If you truly love him, you will abide by his commands. He said, And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And I will do what? Manifest. Reveal myself. God is not revealing himself to everybody. There are certain people that attract him with their passion for him. This is a big secret. Let's look at verse 23 of the same verse. Same chapter, sorry. Jesus answered and said, If a man love me, he will do what? He will do what? So have you been keeping his words? If you have not been keeping his words, you do not love him. Period. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come to him. Are you seeing there? And make our habitation our abode. This is the secret of intimacy. Love for God. The Bible says the secret things of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. Many people, let me tell you the truth. Many people want to serve God. But they don't love the Lord. They respect God though. They are Christians. They are not doing but that passion for God. They don't have it. And then they wonder why God seems to make himself real to other people. I've shown you the secret of intimacy. If you truly love the Lord, you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence. Love for God. Hallelujah. Let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of god without loving him no number two obedience obedience is very important everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience everything 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 in the kingdom is tied to obedience just one scripture so that we we'll put it under there deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing God in anything you are doing. The Bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. He told Cain, Cain was angry because Abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received. He told Cain, he said, if you do what your brother did, will your sacrifice not be accepted? 
So obedience. Anytime you want God to show up and to perform in your life, make sure you obey his principles. The last key that I'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing. Let me shock you very quickly. Tithing has nothing to do with money. Look at me. Tithing does not bring money. The Bible never tied tithing to money. Let me tell you what tithing does. Hallelujah. Sorry. Many people tithe because they want money. Wrong. Tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity. It is your giving that brings financial increase. Are you hearing me? Tithing opens the heavens. See, listen, listen, look at me. There's no time. We have to touch other aspects and I want us to pray. Please look at me. The Bible says God created many trees in the Garden of Eden. Is that true? But God kept a tithe in that Garden of Eden. I want to show you where tithing started from. So long as that tithe was not touched, the heavens were open. God could come in the cool of the day. Is that true? Please answer me. Tithing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens. So whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper. That's why tithing does not just affect finance alone. Health, longevity, different aspects of our lives. The reason why we preachers only reduce tithes to money is simply because we want the money. Period. The day man touched the tithe, what happened? The heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of Eden. Look at how important tithing is to God. So long as man did not touch the tithe, he could enjoy any other tree. He touched the tithe, God sent him out. So every many of us are operating under closed heavens. You are giving but under closed heavens. You are serving God but under closed heavens. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever you do. See, the devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. He operates on legal grounds. Principalities operate on legal grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you can you don't pray them away you don't pray them away there are kingdom principles that keep them at bay please understand this he said in my name they shall cast out what but he said they overcame them by it is in my name many of us have been praying trying to cast away principalities in our lives no it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far that means if you are not a tighter even god cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three the three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithe the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus I receive grace to be faithful i need my heavens open see when your heavens are open you will know you will know your heavens are open one time i was praying i think around chapel and the lord showed me a vision i looked up and i saw like two ancient gates they were closing and opening closing and opening i said lord what is the meaning of this and the lord told me this is the heavens opening and closing over people and this is the faithfulness of tithing 
please take this serious tithing does not bring money tithing opens the heavens when the heavens are open anything done under that open heavens will succeed you see why some of you have been given you have been given to the poor you have been given to the needy things are not working because the heavens are closed the devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not This is a powerful key that many many ministries there are many ministries who love god great preachers but they are living under closed heavens so they don't know why members don't come have you seen people complain like that members come and go members do this and that i will train people and then they will leave let me tell you something check it if you are not careful the heavens are open the heavens are closed sorry when your heavens are open you will see extraordinary things that you know only God can do. You can't negotiate this principle. God is not a politician. There's no back door. No shortcut. Hallelujah. So have you been faithful in tithing? If you have not been faithful in tithing, stop saying God is responsible for what you are in. You have permitted the devourer. There are many of us who are in business. You don't tithe. Many of us, God blesses us. You don't tithe. See, if you do it out of force, it's not by faith. And whatever is not of faith is sin. You just wasted your time. It is a product of a revelation. How can I eat the tithe of God? Here is my heart, my mind. Make up your mind. Lord, not touching your tithe. If you are faithful, you will live in Eden. When you touch the tithe, you are sent out of Eden. When they sent man out of Eden, toiling and all kinds of things. There are many of you, truly, it's not like God is not blessing you, but it does not work. The Bible says, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Take this tithing thing serious. The number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing. Don't think this is a gimmick by preachers. If you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe, it's God that will punish you. But you do your part. Do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you. Yeah, am I sure it's not that usher that will carry my money? What is your business? Make up your mind. Buy envelopes. Many of us are owing God. You say, God, let me touch this 5,000. Please. This is an emergency. I must respond to it immediately. And the devourer is saying, go ahead. Please, go ahead. The moment you take it, <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head, the devourer goes. And you just fall down and stand up and say, thank you, Jesus. The devourer is waiting for you. The moment you come out, the oppression continues. I'm telling you, kingdom principles. Supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens. He said, you will see the heavens open. The moment the heavens are open, angelic activities begin in your life. When Jacob saw the heavens open, what happened? Angels started ascending and descending. And Jesus told Nathaniel, he said, you are you are shouting because you have just seen these things he said you will see greater things what are the greater things you will see the heavens open and the angels every time angelic activities are scarce in your life check your heavens may be closed hallelujah number two prayer so revelation one and then prayer prayer you must pray you must pray it's one of the greatest spiritual investments now i've had preachers even on tv talk against prayer and they say pray 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 you pray you don't pray all you just need is the word 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 <laughs> listen let me tell you the honest and sincere truth the bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables i mean the ministry of uh, we will not concentrate on serving tables we will focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity 
the gifts of the spirit will find expression the anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life and the anointing itself is capital everybody say anointing is capital yes we only know naira and copper and dollars and pounds to be capital anointing is big capital are you hearing me the anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open anointing is great capital all men seek for thee that's what they told jesus why were they seeking for him because he had an anointing do you know that if you have an anointing the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve you concentrate and build that capital i have entered places today that if i was not anointed there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible hallelujah prayer let's look at the second cost spirit move over me spirit move over me intellectual cost everybody say intellectual cost say it intellectual cost so the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment. Second cost is intellectual cost. Help us Holy Spirit. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Everybody, while you are opening, I'd like you to shout, knowledge is power. Not, not that school. Say, knowledge is, power. knowledge is power. Say it again, knowledge is power. Hallelujah. Knowledge is truly power. If you value knowledge and you value information, you will do wonders in this earth realm. Please listen. This is where I want everybody to give us our attention because I know for many of us, the spiritual cost, we are paying it very well. But probably, we are not paying the intellectual cost. Knowledge is power. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Everyone read. One to read. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. why knowledge everybody say knowledge say information what you do not know can destroy you ignorance is not an excuse in this realm in the world of champions you don't give room for ignorance many of us are spiritually serious but we are mentally lazy we are not willing to pay the price. Preachers, hear me. MOG, wake up. Many preachers are intellectually lazy. And they wonder why they are not commanding results. Hallelujah. Sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information. Your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador whether business whether your job there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues they are paying spiritual prices but they are neglecting their intellectual price look at me see honesty is good but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results competence is key and competence is a product of intellectual prowess are you listening to me many nigerians have dreams and visions there are many books dream big have a great vision that's wonderful but just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass you must re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs everybody say intellectual cost 
ignorance is very costly. I told you. Very, very costly. He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. This book of the law, the Bible says, this book, not this chase magazine, not this pointless novel, this book, many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity. Somebody comes and says, God is calling me. I'm going to be a public speaker. I saw it in a vision. I saw myself wearing suit like Pastor Femi. You may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready. You think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't, you've not read any book on public speaking. You don't know anybody. Hallelujah. You're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you. You will never arrive there. This is what will frustrate you more many christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying although they love god they see that they are lazy intellectually go to the house of many believers you don't find anything somebody is walking in his job he's never read any book to improve him does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah praise the lord it's very important many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually you believe god is calling you to be a reality a tv show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever and you sit down people ask you what do you know about marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife do you know listen listen see no matter how tongue talking you are are you hearing me if i want to employ people and I see that you are going, your, your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation. Do you think I will employ you? Please answer me. So why are you angry with God? There are many people who are not interested. Listen, this is important. They are not interested in building themselves. They don't build capacity. How many books do you have in the area you believe God is sending you to? see let me tell you we live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough are you hearing what i'm saying listen there must be an added advantage the difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil there are many people who go into business they don't know anything about the business they just hear somebody went to dubai and went and brought containers you too you stand up carry everything you have home and abroad they go and throw you away from the airport say you are going to dubai they seize all of your goods now you come back god is not faithful i'm a titan no no everybody say intellectual prowess psalms 45 verse 4 can we look at it quickly we're going to pray psalm 45 verse 4 Shade god is doing something in this place he said listen and in thy majesty write prosperously because of what truth information write prosperously because of the truth that you know write prosperously bishop oedipo said something that touched me in a very powerful way he said most restaurants you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old. The owner has died, yet the restaurant is still on. In Nigeria, somebody opens a restaurant. After two, two years, he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant. And the person is a Christian. Everybody say after me, your intellect, your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally. I tell you, I, I feel the fire of God in this place. I must burn this enough. Buy books. Buy books. Not trainers. Buy books. 
not with one buy books not Mary Kay the books will buy you Mary Kay see he said buy the truth sell it not there are certain things I do every day before I sleep every day some of you sleep from morning till night you are just happy lazying around you come and see people reading and you say oh boy you said now wow, what are you reading you keep distracting people there is a name for those people they are called enemies of progress how many of us pay attention there are many of us visitation hopping from house to house hopping to people's office gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future great men hear me are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds that you are a christian is no guarantee for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy they give you a speech to prepare you didn't prepare for it you are not serious about it god has brought favor lack of intellectual preparation kill the favor out of your life hallelujah there are many of you oh god is calling me into decoration what do you know about decoration how many books show me the dvds you are watching about those who have who are champions in decoration and you come and just keep sleeping dirty pieces of paper for people please give me a contract i am a christian i'm your member so what so what oh i can make hair don't patronize that person is an unbeliever patronize me the person patron he said plot me all back you plot like this yet you think that the person will just say okay you are a nice christian are you contending to improve yourself i improve myself every day i'm not satisfied with where i am in every area of my life show me what you are doing to build your mind show me the investments you are making mentally and i can tell you whether you will be part of the world changers or you will be part of the storytellers are you listening to me very important lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace to build my mind i will buy books I will buy DVDs. I will build myself in the area I've been called to function. I will be the best. I will not relent until I am the best. Say, I will not relent. I refuse to be a local champion. I'm a global champion. Hallelujah. Yes. Make up your mind. Refuse to be a local champion. A brother is, is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000. So they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration. You just did every kind of ugly thing and they say, who did this? They say, you. They say, talk. Well done. You just believe that another time you say, I'm carrying a proposal to Abuja. You carry your file and you are moving to go and disgrace yourself in Abuja. When you go there, you will see other people who have worked upon themselves. When you see their designs, you just stand there as if God failed you. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Believers, build yourself. Every day, there are four things I do until, before I sleep. I must build myself spiritually. I must build myself corporately. I must build myself in leadership. What are you doing? What do you do with your 24 hours? Many of you early in the morning, they saw you in Samaru. Later on, you are in High Dogo. Later on, you are around and you just come and say, I'm, I'm, I had a busy day. Doing busy but doing nothing. Nothing. You went to go and gossip. Jakes, Kajikwa. You now run to another person. You did this. Stop it if you have been doing that. Great leaders are not like that. If somebody comes and is disturbing you, don't be afraid to tell the person, sorry, I'm doing some studies. I'm praying. Some of you are embarrassed. You don't want to be bad. Ah. Create a protocol around your life. Let nobody just jump in and out of your life. 
because they think they want to see you you are studying at that point illumination is coming somebody just bash it in or buy anything for the boys politely tell the person i'm i'm in a period i'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to mount ararat and take them to a place where they will be great do you not know samadhi he says ideas rule the world there are many of you if only you pay attention the truth is god tried for you you are very intelligent you are just not serious you can't sit down and pay the price and you know something listen the truth is if you really really want to be great god will open the way for you the reason is many of us do not want it bad enough that's why the way has not opened I don't care what it is you want if you desire it truly he said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is a level of passion when i want things i get them oh yes i get them i will pay any price to get it for me pain is not an issue hallelujah when i travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking i get a biro i'm just listening to them ardently or i'm just typing on my phone i'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing while i'm listening i'm reaching out to my pocket finding any seat there to connect you see let me tell you i i taught this already in commanding results the law of honor things do not just happen are you hearing what i'm saying things are made to happen the truth is whatever area it is you are trusting god to go to there are people who are carriers of that grace there are people who have that knowledge you want to plot you believe you want to start a saloon have you gone to somebody who has who has a saloon and tell the person see i have 2000 naira can i give you this 2000 naira and be coming every day and be learning for one hour i plead with you see me I started plotting somebody this all these people this arrogance is what has kept a lot of people humility if you do not humble yourself you will never build your mind don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you doctors don't look for sick people they establish an institution called a hospital and the sick people look for them passionately and even in the hospital there are different kinds of words according to your desperation there is a word called emergency word when you really need help badly they take you to that word life has emergency word there are many people who you can get tired of your life that you say no i'm not going to any i'm going to an emergency word build yourself build yourself oh god wants to make me a pastor and god showed me in a vision I'm going to have 1,000 branches. My brother, start getting, going for knowledge before you die early. The trouble of managing yourself is even killing you. And you want to manage 1,000 branches full of members. See, this is why God does not answer the prayer of a lot of people. They, they want crowd. They do not know the complexities that come with managing people. Every day there is a case somewhere somewhere this is what was wearing moses away and his father jethro in law um, uh, his father in law jethro began to give him a key on how to he would have died for nothing there are many men of god who are dying because they are doing everything everything because they do not understand the principle everybody say i receive grace to build my mind jordan bookstore is there you can start let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business let me see your hands business people whether potentially or presently what are you doing in that line of business keep your hands lifted so that i will what are you doing are you doing anything or you are just converting other people who have gone ahead and say hey god oh this is lucky oh please drop your hands take it seriously you want to do business behave like a businessman don't behave like a thief how many of you believe that god has called you into one form of leadership or the other whether corporately almost everybody should be lifting their hands you are either a father or a mother at least what are you doing to be no i'm serious 
What are you doing to build it? I build myself every day. I interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest. I love everybody, but I will not learn from everybody. I want to shorten my journey as much as possible. So I'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me. Then after many years, go for the best. Say go for the best. Tell your neighbor, go for the best. Don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people. You know your brother is good, but the truth is he cannot sing very well. You want to be a musician, collect his own tape so that he won't feel angry. But go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field. Loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward. A man of God who is not a businessman, doesn't know anything about business, is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense. He's a good man of God but a bad businessman. And a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back. Love your pastor, honor your pastor. If he's not a businessman, look for a businessman and listen to him. Hallelujah. Finally, the third cost is the physical cost. If you're angry with me, that's a sign that God is working on you seriously. You know I won't stop. No way. Physical cost, the third one. It takes diligence and work. Not necessarily hard work, but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments. Look at me. Everybody say laziness. Say one more time, laziness. For the last time, laziness is not my portion. In Jesus' name. If you want to accomplish things supernaturally, extraordinary accomplishments, three things must suffer momentarily in your life. Number one, your time. Number two, your energy. Number three, your resources. The proof of love, the clearest proof of love is the investment of time. You must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough. How much time are you putting on ground how much energy energy everybody say energy see great people in life are workaholics are you hearing me they walk their life out until they enter that realm of greatness praise god i've been ministering in the last three weeks traveling ministering doing a lot of things but it does not stop me from doing the things I have to do. Hallelujah. From this place, I have another trip again. Traveling up and down. Yet, you must give your energy. Everybody say energy. Some of you like sleep. Once it's 9.30, you're already nodding. Even if you are talking with somebody, you just do like this. And the next thing you are sleeping. No. No. If you love sleep, you will kill your, your future. your legs inside cold water and said my eyes you can sleep if you want to sleep but my life must move forward if you make that determination no devil in existence will stop you physical efforts there are some of us who are lazy you hate pain you hate anything discomforting you you hate embarrassment right now as i'm talking you're feeling embarrassed why are you embarrassing us every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment where you open up your heart and say flog me just lash it let it come to build me many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us either because you're a pretty lady or you're a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change Proverbs 14 verse 23 We'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray Your destiny must move forward in the name of Jesus 
Proverbs 14 verse 23. Let's read together. One to read. In all what? In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips. Cheap talk. There are many people that talk, 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 talk. But the Bible says in all labor. Put your talk to work. In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips tended to what? Penury. Pack your talk with tremendous efforts and tell yourself, no matter what it will cost me, say in the name of Jesus, no matter what it will cost me, I am prepared to pay the price to be the best in my field, in the area God has called me. I will be outstanding. I will pay the price the price of time the price of energy the price of my resources some of you are on scholarship students a few of you god is blessing you 50,000 or 75,000 or your five or ten thousand is coming every time you get it you are always running to the restaurant every time you get it boys it don't land you can't be great that way. You can't be great that way. So you create a momentary feeling of being successful. Why don't you pay the price and create the real one? Stop pretending like you are there when you are not there. If your capacity has not reached for Indomie, take Gary and use them. I, I, are you following me now? If your capacity has not reached for baked beans, get the normal one shake off all those things from it and cook it giving thanks knowing that it will change there are too many people living fake lives fake lives you create an impression you do not have the resources to defend somebody comes you see my watch now you say i must buy this kind of watch you go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself and you are suffering alone and god will say so it when you buy it that's frustration for you see let me tell you say after me there is time for everything say it be careful what you covet about people and don't put yourself under pressure you don't need to prove a point to anybody if you have only one trouser that has torn sew it honorably and wear it let the people laugh very well so that when you become great they won't, they won't say it's magic they saw you some of you will charter a car from Samaru to Sabo. You say, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Hurry for what? 250 naira that you can buy a book. You have not gotten to that level. Be patient. The jeep will come. Nobody is arguing it. But it won't come now. Pay the price. Sister, you will buy the human hair. For now, use what is available. Use what is available carry 10,000 and spend it and you are just moving around fake lives use that that resource to build yourself say amen, amen. if your own has not reached for shagalinku go to zinc house go to come market go anywhere be honorable about it there was a time it was zinc house we used to go to that was that was our level and let me tell you in all sincerity even at that level, we were better than a lot of people. By that means, it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there were they were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that you start suffering nothing else about your life stop pretending it you will get there one day for now invest in yourself don't waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up 
Proverbs 10 verse 4 He becometh poor That deals with what? A slack, a lazy, a slothful hand He said but the hand of the diligent will do what? The hand of the diligent will bless him And with that resource he will be able to do big things for the kingdom Next scripture Proverbs 12 verse 24 the hand of the diligent again God says scriptures about hands about hands the hand of the diligent shall bear rule in other words shall lead the hand of the diligent will take him above he will take charge he will dominate he will break records he will set the pace But the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price, shall be under tribute. One last scripture Proverbs 20, verse 4. Above all, the sluggard will not plow. And what is his excuse? There is cold. Therefore, shall he do what? Therefore, shall he do what? now is the time to sow many people let me tell you thank god you are hearing this now because there are people who think you are wasting your time i promise you they will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come it's not a false prophecy it's the truth about life many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents two of us where were our parents when they were paying the price and they get angry when they see them this is what happens to poor people when they don't pay the price and they see others that go ahead see every time you accomplish supernatural things you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results Are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension? I've shown you how. These are keys. Your eatery can be the best. God didn't lie when he spoke to you. Are you hearing me? Your business can be the best. Your ministry can be the best. Your life, that book can be a bestseller. You just need to find out find out from those whose books have been bestsellers you wrote your book it was great but it was not a bestseller yet find out god has told you that he's putting the word of the lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations as it is nobody knows you go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing pay the price and i tell you if if i were a prophet if that God called me into the prophetic ministry I would have done things that would shock people many people are not ready to pay the price everything is available but there is a price tag on it if you can pay it carry it the best car in the world is still on sale if you have the money today you can go and order it nobody will stop you all the packages in life according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability every time i stand before koinonia i don't see see let me tell you a time will come the people you see today will be the ushers in eni just the ushers because i know there is a world dying that cannot resist the solution we are bringing impossible our job is to contend for greater grace man Oh my God, I'm a success. Hallelujah. I have the capital of the anointing. I have the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of God in me. And I will pay that price. Rise up on your feet. I bring you words of comfort. It will not always remain like this. Your life will change. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Mam bretta kata balada bos, te 
supernatural accomplishments extraordinary accomplishments like Uzziah Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get here. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. Inspire yourself. I cannot be a failure. And David encouraged himself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we are going to pray three prayer points. First is your spiritual life. How many of you know the anointing is capital? I've shared it with you now. The anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life that your, your business for, for 10 years cannot give. I, why are you neglecting it? And one river came out of Eden. It parted itself into dimensions. You are going to pray. Say, Lord, I value your presence. I value your anointing. That anointing, I take it like a capital. Lift your voice and pray. Mambreta kata 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 bash. Shanda praise kalabash. Shanda paka prosoto balaraba. Hallelujah. The anointing. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. Power to heal the sick. Power to deliver the oppressed. Access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great. I refuse to be an ordinary preacher. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Walking in signs and wonders that will confound men. I'm stepping into deep dimensions of power, of grace. I respect your anointing. I respect your anointing, oh God. Pray. You need the capital of the anointing. You need the capital of the Holy Ghost. The greatest gift. And the Bible says the gift of a man. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the anointing. They told Jesus, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. Rich men seek for thee. Blessed people seek for you. Because of what you carry. If you carry grace, they will look for you. If you carry power, they will look for you. If you carry unction, they will look for you. If you carry fire, they will look for you. They will invite you. They will sow into your life. They will bless you. My spiritual life, I receive your fire, oh God. It's not a waste, it's a glorious investment that will separate you, regardless of your lineage, regardless of your career, regardless of any factor. There is a world dying out there. They need the anointing. They are willing to honor it. They are willing to invest in it. They are willing to reward it. When you become anointed, you will be above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. During my birthday, I was amazed at all the gifts that I got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation. Many who have been blessed by the grace. Anointing is capital. Get this revelation. 
when you pay the price if you get authentic grace there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something there are some of you right now you came here you left different places you package seeds some gifts in kind in cash you are waiting for the grace to sow years ago you were still alive but you did not come to me because there was no grace that means if i increase the grace a time will come i will start attracting a kind of people anointing is capital hear me he said because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows i hardly pay for things in my life right now i hardly pay for anything because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me that's what the anointing can do in your life stop struggling go for the anointing go for grace go for fire go for power and see the way it will raise you all other factors notwithstanding there are people who would never listen to me but they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life my age notwithstanding it has opened doors for me my age notwithstanding my level of exposure notwithstanding do you know that the anointing is capital it can end inferiority in your life when you have something men will come to drink of it he said gentiles will come to my life prayer point number two you're going to say lord i've been intellectually lazy i don't buy books i don't read but i repent this night and i begin to build myself i study by books lift your voice and pray lord i go for books i go for tapes I sit down with relevant materials along the area that I'm trusting life to break forth for me. Shata tata tabaka. Koinonia pray. Koinonia pray. He said, Then shall your life break forth. Then shall your life break forth. The power of information. If you know what to do, greatness is yours for the taking. If you know what to do, and Uzziah invented engines. Pray, my mind is blessed. I am not God. Pray, I study books. I buy exercise books. I study every day. I sit under mentors. I sit under men that carry the things I need. Whether in business, whether in leadership, there are men who have gone ahead already. Listen to them. Receive mentorship from them through books, through tapes. Prophesy to yourself. I'm an extraordinary leader. I'm an extraordinary entrepreneur. I'm an extraordinary business businessman. I will shake this country with my ideas. I will shake this country. Go ahead and prophesy. I will do what has not been done before. I will create a new ways in the financial world, in the labor world. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Last prayer point. Look at me. Last prayer point. You're going to pray and ask the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, give me such grace that I will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment. These two things. If you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment, I salute you because you must be a world champion pain embarrassment these two things if you are still conscious of pain whether in the cold whether in the rain you will invest time you will invest energy
you will invest resources lift your voice and pray let pain no God not be an issue for your people may they know no pain may they know no pain may they be men fearless men strong men of grace men of audacity men of audacity who will poke their eyes their hands in the eyes of the enemy men of faith fearless courageous strong brother say say i can make it i can make it yes i can burn that idea those who have survived much pain. Great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive. Great men are men who have endured. Great men are men who have tried and didn't stop. They fell, didn't stop. They were weak, didn't stop until they emerged as champions. Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some even your eyes have been plugged. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. The Bible says, is there hope for a tree, although it be cut short? I bring you a word of hope. If the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root, he only wasted his time. Because God will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond. Hallelujah. So get books. Get tapes. Get serious. You know any of your friend that is not serious. Don't criticize them. Encourage them in love. For many of you who Satan is using your yesterday against you. Right now. I silence the voice of that accuser. Of the brethren. Because the Bible says. That judgment has been declared upon him. Your mistakes of yesterday. Cannot follow you into your tomorrow. There is a brand new day. You can rise again. You can glow again. You are still that champion. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. The miracle is not in what you have lost. The miracle is in what you have left. If you have ears to hear and two legs to walk again, you will fall again. You will become a mighty tree. Everybody remain standing. All of this will happen only when your spiritual life is put in check. And I know that there are many of us, the Lord brought you here tonight. Some of you have never truly made a decision for Jesus. You've had preachers again and again and again and again. One of the secrets of our lives is that we are committed to turning many into righteousness. Daniel 12 verse 3. It says, they that be wise shall be like the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. It's an opportunity that you will become a star. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But honestly, you have derailed from the part of the spirit. And you have failed again and again and again. And tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. Listen, whether you are inside or outside, there is love for you. This is a place of hope. Are you hearing me? The Bible says there is hope for a tree. You are that tree because the Bible says you will be like a tree. The Lord is about to plant you tonight by rivers of living waters. So that with any season you will still be fruitful. I'd like you to leave your seat right now. And come out here. There are many people. Go ahead.
Go ahead and take that step. Go ahead and take that step inside and outside. Don't wait for somebody else to come. You are the first to come. There are many people inside and outside. Appreciate them as they are coming. Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I need Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. This is the beginning of a new season. Don't say everybody knows my face. There's no time for that right now. Come and stand before his presence. I can do nothing. I can do nothing without you. Without you. There's no life. There's in me. no life. To so I need you in my life. So I need you in my life. In my life today. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden the lord is still ministering to me that there are two people who are supposed to be here as i'm talking to you the holy ghost is telling you leave your seat and come out what are you afraid of there are two people the lord is showing me two people honestly speaking the lord is showing me two people two people leave your seat and come the holy ghost is ministering there is one more person left god cannot lie impossible god cannot lie hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front be proud of it this is not a mortuary don't come as if no it's so, if i give you a gift you will rejoice when you want to give people speech and price don't they come out you call them out this is the same thing god is giving you a gift hallelujah mean it from your heart don't recite it as a poem recitation does not bring new birth it's a sincere desire from your heart say after me lord jesus I have come to the end of myself and I love you with all my heart I know you are the only one who can help me and tonight I have heard your word take my destiny mold me make me a wonder I denounce sin and Satan I declare old habits are gone bad habits are gone I am a new creation in Christ according to the truth of God's word I have eternal life in my spirit I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me grant me grace to live a victorious life my generation will hear my voice from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father Look at these ones. They are your children, your sons and daughters. They have come in response to your call. Lord, let their conversion be authentic. May they never go back to the things that they are coming out from right now. I impart upon you grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From today, you will be extraordinary. And you will do mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look up. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. We'd like to follow you, Pastor Jakes. We'd like to meet with you personally and to talk with you and pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to follow the usher. He will have your details. The gentlemen waving their hands. Just turn back and follow them. They'll have your details. And when they have your details, they'll have a personal time with you. And they'll discuss further and bless you. God bless you. Please follow them. Appreciate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Very quickly, those who are worshiping with us for the first time, now please, I need you to understand this is not a ritual. We call people out to recognize them, to honor them, and to bless them. These three things to recognize them, to honor them, and to bless them. So, all the people who are coming, if this is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, I'd like you to leave your seat. If you came with somebody and the person is not coming, tell the person, I want you to be blessed. You must be blessed. Push the person forward. God bless you. Appreciate all of them. Thank you for coming outside. Koinonia, is this the best you can do?
Thank you. May God bless all those who invited them. May God keep inviting your destiny helpers to your life in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who leave your homes, your offices, and watch a lot of people and don't invite them, grace for you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. The Word of God is a seed containing the very life of God. It is His agent of transformation. As you receive these words in your heart with faith, that life is released into your spirit and your life receives a supernatural lifting. Join Apostle Joshua Selman as he brings you God's Word with simplicity and power. carry the mind that I'm on my own the person standing by your right and your left is not important at this time again I want you to know if the person, if you knew the person was a lady or was a guy, at this time you don't know who the person is again yes I heard a story of a local football team that was um, going to go into competition with another team and because Team B discovered that Team A always wins their competition because there's a particular drink they take before they go play football. Hallelujah. Um, like two days before the competition, Team B, they were so rich, they decided to buy all the drink in the city. What were they pursuing? What were they pursuing? they were able to discover the weakness and or the, the, the thing that makes them a win and they went and bought all the drink and here comes the day of the competition team A looked for that drink in the city they didn't get it that's how the devil operates the devil knows those things that are most important in the Christian faith and he keeps them away from us Jesus said you pay tight of cumin and anise you pay tight of little things, but you have neglected the weightier matters. The things that are most important in the kingdom, the devil will always keep them away from you. He didn't know who Jesus was. He decided to slay and to kill children that were two years downwards in the whole city. The devil walks by trial and error. He knows those things that are important. At times, he doesn't know which ones are important to you. He just masquerades everything to make sure you are discouraged I read the story of a man that just got married don't worry stand we'll keep standing it's a prayer meeting <laughs> amen the man just got married and was relocating from the city where he grew up to another city where he was going to reside with his wife on the ship they bothered was his parents, his siblings, and all the gifts he collected during the wedding, and his wife. They were escorting him. He was going to find another place to start up his life with his wife. And that was how everything, the ship capsized. He was the only one that could swim inside. He was able to find his way out. He lost his mom, he lost his dad, he lost the wife. And that was the man that composed the hymn, What a Friend We Find in Jesus. He looked back. There was no mother again. There was no father. There was no wife. The properties were not there. Where is he going to start from? And he sang the song, What a Friend We Find in Jesus. Jesus, the storms of life will always come to check what, where and what your faith is anchored upon. If your faith is anchored upon all that you can get from God and not what you can give him, then the devil can easily distract you. When little things happen, happens around you, you begin to complain and to grumble because your faith is anchored on the things of the earth. There were men that walked with God. They didn't have anything. 
there was nothing they were attached to the only thing they knew was their mission and their assignment hallelujah we're going to be praying tonight we're going to be praying tonight according to the season and the instruction today is meant for prayers we're going to pray because i've discovered that prayer is one important thing that god has given us but a lot of times we don't know and the devil cheats us by scaring us by taking us away from the place of praying because he knows that when we pray we go to fetch strength against him the bible says they that wait upon the lord shall renew the word renew means exchange your strength is dropped somewhere and you carry on the strength of God because the devil knows that whenever you go to pray, your strength is exchanged for the strength of the Lord. He will do everything for you not to pray. When you come to the place of prayers and that's when he begins to remind you of the things you did in 1992. When you come into the place of prayers, you must carry a conscience that has been sanctified by the blood of jesus you must remember the redemptive work of christ is on that standpoint you are accessing god not because of what you have done good or what you have done wrong thank you jesus go ahead and praise him thank you jesus Mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Jesus. For in your presence, strength is releasing to us. Thank you, Father. Hope will be restored. The oppressed will be delivered. In the name of Jesus, things will be established in the realm of the Spirit name of Jesus in Jesus holding them we pray amen please worship team just remain there we're ministering together today I'm not going to be preaching for long we're going to pray amen much more than what we are going to be doing in the service it's my desire that you live here with a culture you live here with an attitude share with us briefly to show you the importance and the omnipotence of prayers. Why do we pray? There's something common to every religion. I discovered that all religions are, they are superficially the same. Religion involves prayers. Every religion has a black book. They have their meeting day. Religions take offering. Some religions, they dance, they do all manner of things. And I and I keep wondering why and how is Christianity different? They are superficially the same, but they are fundamentally different. God has given us something that supersedes religion. Religion cannot bring man into relationship with God. Only Christianity. Jesus said, I am the way. That means definitely, I am the way. There is no other way. There might be windows that people pass through once in a while. He called them thieves. He said, but I am the way. No man can get to the Father except by him. The whole plan of God is clearly written here. If you read this and you understand it, I wonder how atheists, professors, apologists of other religions, they read this Bible, all they can get out of it is questions and contradictions that they see from the Bible. Jesus said to the Pharisees, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have life. He said, come to me. Jesus was the custodian of life, and that Jesus is living in me today. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we are here. We are not gathering under any name, no religion, no denomination, and all that. They have limited it. God a lot. Roll down the years. If you check, God will reveal himself to a particular denomination. Before you know, they are not able to move beyond the revelation of God they have. God, the work of God and the revelations of God are progressive. God wants to take us from glory to glory and to glory and to glory. If you remain where you are and keep basking upon the fact that you have known him, you have not seen anything. Amen.
welcome your neighbor once more say you are welcome amen you may be seated hallelujah amen those days that we used to go pray at the court a lady met me one day she said she has been too troubled about the fact that whenever she hears me pray at the court that i shout she was asking me why do you always shout when you pray and i said do you want to know and i told her are you filled with the holy spirit she said no that she's filled i said do you pray in the holy ghost she said no 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 no. you are taking it too far and i had five lectures with that lady just five lectures in the bible she received the baptism of the holy ghost and before she graduated from this school when you hear her pray she prays even louder than i do <laughs> hallelujah amen god can you can't put god you can't put a, a square peg in a circular hole you cannot define god you cannot put him somewhere and say this is his dimension this is his length his breadth and everything amen god is only revealed he grants men access and revelation per time you walk with him by that revelation the revelation he gives you per time is not a definition of his whole and his whole personality amen i'll be sharing with us in 20 minutes before we begin to pray the omnipotence of prayers and intercession genesis chapter one genesis chapter one Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, we are going to see the purpose of God in creation. 1 verse 26. 1 verse 26. He said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. In the image of God to look like God and in the likeness of God to function like Him. And let them have dominion. The purpose of God in creation. The purpose of God in creation was dominion. The word Adam, Adam, is the original translation means mankind of God. The animals were created after their kind. The birds after their kind, goats after their kind, the cows after their kind. But man was not created after any kind man was created after god so the bible says and god said let us make this man let us make him in our image and our likeness so that he will have dominion in the third dimensional realm we have created so that i can sit in heaven with the godhead and have access and have authority over the earth through the man i have made so the reason why you are on earth is what dominion and he said let's continue over dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them hallelujah from the study of the bible please look up from the study of the bible i came to believe and understand that the creation of man in the, the intention of god was to make man when god had that thing in mind to make man the first thing he did was to create him the next thing he did was to form him and the other thing that was going to be done was the completion and the consummation of the making process that would have made man carry the full authority and the dominion that God intended on the earth but we saw that the process was not complete because for the process to be complete there was a part in the process that required that man would demonstrate his will and his choice man god never intended man to be a robot one that he can control god is omnipotent he has all power the breath of his nostril alone can carry you from here to kaduna is it true amen but why 
Is it that things happen at times and God just sit down and is looking? Because the man he created is not a robot. The man has a will. Say will. Amen. The man has a will. Now, because man has a will, the greatest dimension of worship and glory God receives from his creation is from man. Stones, trees, and inanimate objects, they worship God. They don't have an option. They don't have a will. They must just worship him. But man has a will. When a man now decides to worship God, God gets the greatest dimension of glory and pleasure because the man is worshipping him out of his free volition and out of his will. So, God now plays... You wonder why did God now place the evil tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden amongst the other good trees. The Bible said there were so many trees in the garden but he mentioned two specifically the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first thing God did was to create man. The creation is from the Hebrew word bara. I know you know that. Creating from something that does not exist. Man existed in God. If you were looking for man before Adam came, man was in God. Just as the vision of God's plan for your life is within you, is in your heart. It is one day that will begin to see the manifestation of that thing God spoke to you in the secret place. God has given you a ministry and is sending you to Lokoja or somewhere like Kafansha. Nobody knows. You are just a brother growing in ministry, praying in tongues, falling under the anointing, studying the Bible. But one day as you walk with God consistently, there will be a manifestation of that vision. So God was in man. No, man was in God. So God created man and formed man out of nothing that is tangible. The next process in the creation or the making of man was the forming. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, let's read it very fast. And the Lord God formed man, Genesis 2 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Amen. That is another process. The first one is creation. The Hebrew word bara bringing forth out of nothing what does not make sense the next process is the process of formation this word is yasa to form by squeezing if you have seen people that are in art and design maybe sculpture or others when you see them with clay they, they there's how they squeeze it and mold it together so that um, there will be a complete mix the whole thing will have a uh, uniform moisture content amen hey, god help us in jesus name <laughs> amen now that is the formation that was what god did god stepped down with the dust of the earth he began to squeeze it and to form it together and he was able to form a structure that looks like you and when god was done the bible says god saw that it was good i will ask you a question why do you now think at times that you don't look good when God said it was good? Amen. Some of you wish you are like brother A, brother B. Oh, I wish for the sister I'm as fair as sister Dupe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or you look <laughs> into the mirror, you are trying to change the configuration and the alignment of your nose <laughs> to resemble that of an American. Amen. When God created you, God said it was good. As a matter of fact, I'm the most handsome man on the earth. You don't believe. Because, <laughs> because God said it was good. Amen. So the next process was the process of making. And we see that in creation, God was working. In forming jesus was walking jesus was in heaven before he came here in the beginning was the world the world was god and the world was with god and the bible talks about a certain man in the book of revelation 19 verse 13 that his name was written on his vesture the vesture was deep in the blood and his name was the word of god that's why i believe 
that in john chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5 he was referring to jesus as the word verse 14 now says and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us that's jesus christ so jesus was the lord god that was in charge of the forming the holy spirit is the one that would have completed the whole process before the devil stepped in the devil rebelled before man was created he watched god creating man hallelujah apostles have taught us that between genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2 there was a great darkness so there were many years before that time hallelujah we'll continue job chapter 33 verse 4 job 33 verse 4 just take my time lay a little foundation show you the importance before we pray job 33 verse 4 it says the spirit of god hath made me the spirit of god hath made me and the breath of the almighty has given me life this was intended by god to be the completion of that process before god instructed the man he said i have set before you life and death and he now gave you clear he said choose life god will not leave us to ourselves god never leaves us to ourselves god never leaves us in limbo and in doubt god never leaves us in confusion the reason why there's confusion in that matter is because you have not paid attention enough to hear him so whenever god gives man instruction he tells him what to do immediately god gave them a law the decalogue the ten commandments to regulate their behavior and their character but the jewish people decided to add close to 602 laws so the old testament genesis to deuteronomy is full of laws only one man fulfilled that law jesus no man on earth can fulfill the law and when jesus was on earth he was the only righteous man because every other man had in them the seed of adam the bible talked about in the book of romans chapter 5 verse 13 he said and sin reigned from adam to moses even over them that did not sin after the similitude of adam's transgression hallelujah so that was what god began to do he told the man this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the tree of life but man took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil first and what that did was that the life of satan was communicated into man amen man became wicked naturally the creature god confirmed good became evil on the account of that tree so there are two words it's either satanification or deification deity is for god satanification is for satan so as adam was having offspring that life was being transferred to them generation down the years like that until jesus came hallelujah amen and that tree of life we saw it revealed in the book of revelation also revelation 22 don't go there it was talking about the tree of life that is meant for the healing of the nations that means after everything is done the heavens and the earth pass away there is a new heaven that will come down from jerusalem that tree of life will be there and that's where we'll be eating from amen that was what god intended for man that the tree of life is there that whenever man eats of that tree of life the life of god will be communicated into him and dominion and authority is measured by how much of god you carry not your title and not your your position you can be called anything archbishop arch pope arch whatever dominion on earth dominion on earth is measured by how much of his life i'm not now saying how how committed you you are to church how many scriptures you have in your tongue we have a generation of uh, christian they call them textualists text they have a lot of the scriptures in their head the new creation realities and the righteousness of god in christ jesus the lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory all that and that and that and those group of people all they know how to do is to tap resources from the hand of god 
they don't know the way to the heart of God. The Bible talks about the children of Israel that they knew the acts of God, but Moses knew the ways. The acts of God are revealed in his hand and the ways of God are in his heart. It was only Moses that knew the ways of God, the ways of a man that are in his heart. You don't know me until you come close to me. Even when you are close to me, you still don't know me. Man is a mystery. Amen. I saw a picture on Facebook. We see all manner of things on Facebook. Those of you <laughs> on Facebook. A picture of a book from the ground is as high as this. Very high. <laughs> like a book. Can you imagine a book like that? And they wrote under the picture something like understanding women or something. Amen. That means if you start reading that book while you are 16 years old by the time you are 85 you will not be through reading that book and you will not understand it understanding women is a mystery hallelujah amen now what is the dominion mandate why how can you now exercise your dominion now that in the world two things exist light and darkness the kingdom of God exists in the midst of the kingdom of darkness. Within me, for me that I'm born again, inside of me is the kingdom of God. Outside is the kingdom of darkness. God desires that I bring the kingdom inside of me out. For a man that is not born again, I mean born again, regenerated. The man that is not born again has inside of him the kingdom of darkness and outside the kingdom of darkness. Because at regeneration, what happens is God impacts his spirit upon your spirit and there is renewing on the inside. And that newness, God desires and intends that the newness affect your soul and it reaches into your body also. Amen. That's when we say the work of God is complete in your life. Amen. Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 115. Follow me. Psalm 115, verse 16. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth had he given to the children of men amen god has given us the earth the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof god decided because i'm his son to give me the earth please shagun come please just stand there look at this i am i'm not god though but the bible says that ye are gods amen i'm god i stand or I sit in heaven heaven is my throne paradise and I place man on the earth I gave him the earth the earth is for him there is a force that works in the earth that will that will oppose him when he wants to bring the the rule of heaven the the system and the values of heaven into this earth a force will contend with him amen that force is called the force of satan the only way this man can succeed and can work effectively on the earth and fulfill his purpose of bringing the value system of the kingdom of heaven to the earth is when he seeks for assistance from headquarters do you understand that amen the only way this man can fulfill his ministry and his purpose is when he asks for assistance from heaven. Amen. And that's what prayer does. We are on earth. God is in heaven. Prayer is an invitation. The forces we see and everything, they are contending and fighting against us. The kingdom of light will never cease. To contend with the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness will never see to contend with the kingdom of light what we are working towards is chasing the kingdom of darkness out of every environment where we are found 
because in the process of restoration the earth and all the creatures will be restored also and in the book of romans the bible says even the creatures groan until now they are groaning they are waiting for the manifestation and the revelation of the sons of god it was the son of god adam that introduced the bondage of corruption that the romans talked about it will take the sons of god also to remove the bondage of corruption god will not employ any other people and his servants or people animals and angels if god wanted to do that he would have done it since are you wondering how things are going and god it looks like there's no god and people come to a conclusion that there's no god if there's god why is there war first world war came second world war came why is there tsunami why are there people in uh, somalia and uh, uh, other countries like that why are they suffering if there is god god bless his pasha he's blessed american so much that on the street of american you can pick money and food but other countries don't have there is god god cannot break his principle he has given the earth to man he only comes to operate on the earth when man invites him if this is my son and he's married i can't go to his house whenever i want is it true i only go to his house when he invites me imagine that you are married and your mother just dress up one day tie her hair carry her big uh, uh, what do they call that bag Enkolak, and come into your house what will your husband do i know some sisters here won't even allow that <laughs> amen but when you invite her the only reason why she should come is when she is invited god cannot come into the earth unless he is invited prayers is what invite god prayer is an invitation god cannot do anything on the earth unless man invites him because he has given the earth to man sit down thank you he has given the earth to man amen prayer invites god is a thing of relationship so we now invite him on the account of the fact that we have a relationship with him jesus said when you pray say our father who art in heaven i remember when god jesus the bible says in the book of john chapter 5 from verse 17 the bible says the jews sought to kill him not because he had broken the sabbath only but also said that god was his father making himself equal with god how can you say god is your father that's what the religious people were thinking but it's on the standpoint of relationship we access god he's my father and i pray to him i invite him when there is an issue on the earth he has given me a land to conquer he sent me to somewhere like saminaka and i get there and i see darkness everywhere i'll say wow it's no trouble every resources i need is in abundance in headquarters i will call for help that's when when preachers get to a land they begin to pray first it's not publicity first they begin to pray and to take root and to and to stand strong and trench their root in the ground they are inviting god there prayer also is a tool for restoration a tool for restoration the bible says in isaiah in the book of joel chapter 225 he said i will restore unto you the years have you seen what the canker the parma worm and the locust earth they didn't eat your food they didn't eat your farm uh, uh, produce they didn't eat your cassava they ate years life is measured in years how old are you 16 years 28 years so the locust the palmer worm and the canker worm they came to eat years god said i will restore restoration doesn't just happen automatically restoration happened by prayers time cannot be recycled if i lose this handkerchief tomorrow i can get it again by textile science they can recycle this they can recycle this wristwatch they can recycle anything you see the chair you are sitting on can be recycled and turned into a table for you if you like time cannot be recycled can yesterday come back no the only tool that recycles time is prayers the only tool that brings about restoration of the years the palmer worm and the canker worm earth is the tool of prayers 
so when a man no matter how deep you went with the devil in the world let it be that you swim inside the ocean of alcohol the ocean <laughs> amen you swim inside and that has been the life you are living when you turn to god and begin to pray restoration comes so the things you have lost in the past the relationship with god the presence of god the prosperity that was meant for you that you lost in the past as you begin to pray prayers will restore it a sinning man will stop praying and a prayer man will stop sinning the antidote to sin is prayers the antidote to temptation is prayers jesus said pray so that you will not fall into temptation because there will always be temptation he didn't say pray so that there won't be temptation he said pray so that you will not fall into it prayer is the antidote hallelujah we build intimacy also by praying and the highest level of praying is intercession god said i sought for a man to stand in the gap intercession we see the story of daniel how that god placed him in that land and a few others he began to intercede when 70 years passed and nothing was happening he understood by the books that the years of their redemption had passed he began to pray nehemiah also when the walls of jerusalem were broken nehemiah gathered the people of god and said let's begin to pray they prayed and they put their energy and their resources into work and the city was restored the tool for intercession one is revelation daniel understood by the books you need revelation for 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 effective intercession i'm interceding for you i don't know what is happening to you but by revelation god will tell me things to pray about for you the other thing that is needed is consecration daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with a portion of the king's meat two things two requirements for intercession revelation and consecration hallelujah rise to your feet thank you jesus go ahead and pray i know we have to rush because of time thank you jesus go ahead and pray thank you jesus Manda kapata pa shakala, ikamano shilebo dobriha. Prayer is an invitation. When there is an issue in your family, when you don't do anything about it, God will not, because He placed you in your family to be the intercessor and one that changes things. If believers in Nigeria don't pray, God will not come down to do anything.
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.